Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial where we're going to be using the Tableau Server REST API to query this Tableau online site and get information about these three users. And I only have three users because I am using a Tableau dev site. It's kind of a sandbox environment that you'll get for free if you join the Tableau developer program. Uh, I recommend you do it. Tableau is awesome. They give us this free sandbox and then you don't have to burn down your production environment trying out tutorials like this one. So we have our user, uh, our user list over here and we have all this information we can see about them in the, uh, in the Tableau Online interface and let's just explore how we could pull this information into Python or into uh, a CSV file so that you could do whatever you need to do with that information. Maybe a, uh, a really common use case out in the wild is you have some users like we see here who maybe never signed in or haven't signed in in months. So maybe you want to contact those people, see if they still need their licenses, um, maybe remove users who are inactive so that you can save money on licensing. That's just a, a really common thing. So let's hop over here into the REST API reference so we can get familiar with what it is that makes this possible getting the information about our users and I'm going to focus on this query users on site endpoint and um, all these REST API endpoints that are available to you have lots of documentation about them and you get all sorts of really useful information such as for example uh, only a server admin or a site admin can use this endpoint to query information about users so if you're watching this tutorial and you're thinking, hey, this is exactly what I need. I need information about my users. I want to get into a CSV, um, but you're not a site admin or, uh, or better, then you'd need to request access to, to get those permissions bumped up. Otherwise, you will not get this successful 200 response code. Instead, you would get some sad error message that you don't have uh, the appropriate permissions to touch this information. So other things we can see here are uh, like an example of the response that you would get. And if we scroll up, you could also see if you were building this from scratch and not using a library, like in this tutorial, I'm going to use the Tableau API lib library, which I wrote, um, or you could use the Tableau server client library. That's the official one by Tableau. Uh, if you built this from scratch, you would just need to handle all this, um, all these details that basically the REST API reference guides you towards implementing. All right, one last thing here before we jump into code is uh, some information about fields that get returned to you. So we're querying our users and it is good to know that if you want to contact these users, like uh, going back to my example there uh, about contacting people who are inactive, you might want their email address. Um, now on Tableau Online, the name is typically the email address just by default, but on Tableau server, um, you're going to need to do a little bit extra work to get that email address. Unless you're using a library uh, like Tableau API lib where there are functions available to you to get this information for free. So let's hop into the code. And if you have no idea what you're seeing here with these, this connection, um, configuration, I encourage you to go watch the getting started tutorial video, which is linked in the description of this one. And that's going to walk you through, you know, what this means that we're importing a Tableau server connection. And, um, then in addition to importing the connection, we're importing a, another, uh, section of the library that provides us some useful querying functions. And that's going to take, uh, the data that we're getting from the server and it's going to package it into a pandas data frame for us. So we get all the benefits of having um, the pandas API, super powerful. And down here with the configuration, um, I am exposing all this information that, uh, that you normally wouldn't want people to see like your personal access token. I'm just gonna delete this after the video, but I wanted to leave it here so that you could just hit the ground running see exactly what this information is supposed to look like, and then adapt it to your own environment. So I have that all set up. 
I have uh, my environment up here is defined as Tableau Online. So that is the environment I'm going to specify down here as I connect to my server. So that defines all the information that I need to get a nice successful sign-in response. So that 200 response code tells me I've got the green light to keep, uh, keep querying away at Tableau server. And first thing I'm going to do is show you that I was not lying about that three user quota. So using those Tableau online dev sites, you get three users. And then you can also verify all this other information. By the way, out there in the REST API reference, this method, the, the endpoint's also named query site. So you will notice that in the Tableau API lib library, we really try to, to take the names of these endpoints as named in the documentation here and just uh, emulate those in the library. So for example, in this tutorial, we're using get users on site and it's no, no mystery then that when we scroll down here, we're going to be using get users on site. That's the actual method that's implemented to, um, to leverage that endpoint from the REST API reference. Okay, so I wanna show you what this looks like using the, um, using the kind of directly hitting the REST API reference without using some of these nicer, kind of everything's done for you really easily and packaged into a pandas data frame approach. That's what we're going to do uh, next. But first I wanna show you what this looks like if you are just hitting that raw data that the server returns to you. So we have our raw user JSON, and if we take a look at what's inside of this, you may have um, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of users on your server. Um, and if you do, then you're going to be paginating uh, the response that you get about those users. So if you had a thousand users and each page only holds a hundred users, you would, uh, if using this approach to get that, that information, you would need to somehow write some logic to say, all right, I, I know that I only have 100 users per page. I have 1,000 users on my site. Uh, that's what this total available is showing you, telling you how many there are total. So then you could just build some kind of loop and uh, re-query the information. So um, just wanted to kind of explain that that you're not just getting your user information here, you're also getting some additional aspect of this response. And if we wanted to just get our user information, you could do something like this, where you say, okay, I wanna focus in on my users. That was up here, the uh, users key. And then within users, that is itself a JSON object, where the, uh, the key value pair here, you have user as the key, and then you have a list of, um, of JSON objects that describe each of your users. So it's kind of a lot to keep track of here. And we're starting to get a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole. Now we have a, uh, a list of all of our user um, details. But if you wanted to do something like get at those user IDs, you would still need to loop through each object in that list and then um, get the ID value from there. So I find this to be a bit tedious. I, I do like that this, um, that you have the option of going at this from a super granular level and getting that data exactly as the REST API describes it, how it would be returned to you. But if you are like me and you just want to get the job done and uh, you don't want to have to do all the boilerplate coding to paginate through your JSON objects, then you could just use that querying um, section of the library that we imported at the beginning to access some a function such as get users data frame. And what this is going to do is it's going to query that exact same information, but it's going to go through and do all the heavy lifting for you to place that data into a pandas data frame. So we can see what that looks like here. Just to show you I'm not lying, we run type on users df and we see it is a pandas data frame. And we can see that all this data, all that, the, my massive three users, um, all their data is coming through. Now, I'm on Tableau Online, so the full name information is kind of weird. Uh, I can't really change that. The name 
is an email address because that's just how things work on Tableau Online. But if you were on Tableau Server, this name would be you know, the, a, a normal name probably and the full name would display you the, uh, the full name as, as uh, entered into that you know, user's um, account details. And then you have the email address here. Going back to something I mentioned at the beginning, this wouldn't come uh, for free if you were just hitting the API endpoint directly. Notice there is no email key in these user details. So it, by using this data frame function, there's a lot happening behind the scenes. It's unpacking all the pages for you. It's, uh, it's querying the extra columns for you. And then it's packaging it in this nice row and column format in a pandas data frame. So now that you have this in a pandas data frame, let's say you just want all your user IDs. Maybe you need to cycle through a bunch of users and remove those users from your, from your site or add those users to a group. Um, so now we're talking not just out, outputting user details into a CSV, but maybe doing something with the users on your uh, site. Well, then you could just get those user IDs, which are basically your, uh, your gateway into doing anything to that user through the REST API. So we'll have future tutorial videos, future tutorial videos where we, uh, we grab these user IDs and we do something with them, like place them into groups. So um, now you could also, uh, you have the benefit of having this data in a pandas data frame. So you could do things like group by site role and get a count of um, how many users have each site role. That might be important for uh, people who are paying for Tableau um, to know. Maybe they pay per license. Um, anyways, now let's get down here where we um, output this information to a CSV. So just for me, thinking about what I usually want to output, I made a, a brief list of the various columns that I want. So uh, we might not want to output everything. We might be sending this list to you know, some, uh, someone who just needs a very select bit of information such as when did people last log in, what, what's the email address so I can contact them if they haven't logged in recently, uh, figure out if we can give this license to someone else, you know, something like that. So let's run this, see what our output looks like. And here we have a nice CSV with just the information that we want and we can now send that off on its way. And if you wrote this in a Jupyter notebook, you know, next time somebody asks you, hey, can you uh, run that same thing that you gave me a month ago? You could just crack open that Jupyter notebook and you could run all that code again. And in a couple minutes, you've got um, exactly what that person was asking for. And you don't have to go out here and tediously copy and paste any information from your browser. So that's it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope that that's helpful information for you and we'll have a lot more of these tutorials coming in the future. Uh, you could also check out um, on Medium, we're under Devix, D-E-V-Y-X. Uh, there's tons of tutorials out there. Um, if you just search for how to do XYZ with the Tableau Server REST API, chances are you'll find us. So hope to see you in future videos and thank you very much.